Hi everyone, Dothany Ray, Ray Tano, Tano here, here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Fever Ray album, Radical Romantics. This is the latest full-length LP from singer, producer, songwriter Karen Dreyer, aka Fever Ray, who is formerly one half of the Swedish music duo they started with their brother Olaf years ago, The Knife. Karen has been one of the most interesting and influential minds on the forefront of art and electropop for the past few decades now. After an impressive run of Knife singles and albums through the 2000s, Karen began to focus on solo work under the name Fever Ray, which resulted in a 2009 self-titled debut. Uh, this was actually my first year that I was reviewing records on YouTube, and this managed to become my album of the year for, for that that year. I think the record is amazing, it still holds up today. It's very much an album that stays true to Karen's electropop roots, but there's also something about it that felt rustic, communal, and uniquely exotic too. While we did get another Knife album from Karen and Olaf before they officially disbanded in 2014, I was always kind of disappointed that this 2009 album was all that we really had of the Fever Ray project. But Karen fixed that almost a decade later with the record Plunge in 2017 which I wasn't really crazy about, sadly. This thing isn't going on any greatest comeback albums of all time list anytime soon, I'll say that. But you have to restart somewhere, and this wouldn't be the first time an artist took a moment to regroup after being out of commission for a little bit. But the subtlety and nuance that originally made Fever Ray so interesting was kind of lost in the midst of all these zany vocal and instrumental passages. And while Plunge was bravely radical in the face of a... Uh, pretty awful time socially and politically. It was also excruciatingly on the nose. I'm still haunted by phrases like, this country makes it hard to fuck. But this time around on Radical Romantics, I think Karen has done a much better job of balancing message with the mystifying and strange vibes that feel so unique to Fever Ray. I think Karen reintroduces us to that energy on the opening track, What They Call Us, which not only brings back those entrancing synths, the androgynous vocals, the primal percussion, the linear build, but I think this idea of coming to know and understand each other once again comes through in the lyrics too, because the phrase what they call us raises a lot of questions. Could Karen be talking about their recent pronoun change? Are they speaking for the queer community generally here? Or are we hearing thoughts from the perspective of the individual artist being perceived, being analyzed, as they say, it's a common misperception, this is not a band, ready for a dissection, now mommy's gotta work, see the land. The song simmers more than it bangs, but it's still a highlight for me. It also sees Olaf back in the mix on production too, which is cool. Following this, we have the song Shiver, which I think brings back the visceral, sexual, deeply queer energy that many songs on Plunge had, but reimagines it with an instrumental that once more puts more of a priority on repetitive grooves, gradual growth, as well as nuance, with these tiny, itsy, bitsy, reed-like melodies that are quite high-pitched. The whole track feels like an attempt to connect with deeply spiritual sexual urges, with mentions of temptation, a wanting just a little touch, or desire, a wanting to shiver. Fever Ray also makes note of some thick thighs on this track, too. They are speaking my language. So with this track, uh, for sure, I think taking things in a more patient direction in terms of the progression of these songs uh, is, has been a good thing. But there are some songs in the track list here that kind of meander as a result of that change. There's new utensils whose transition into the chorus really isn't all that gratifying, and that stagnation kind of ruins the overall vibe, despite the fact that the lyrical imagery of the track is pretty cool. The hook doesn't exactly hit on the song Candy either. Some of the lyrical phrasing on this cut comes off more off-putting than alluring, even though that's obviously what it's going for in a sense. And things get a little redundant as well on Even It Out, but there's actually quite a bit to talk about here. Because for one, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross actually have production credits on this track, which is uh, dope. But what's even more attention-grabbing are the lyrics, which uh, are very openly vengeful and threatening. Yeah, so that's what that is. Imagine having one of the biggest pop artists in your country 
uh, promising to get you one day. <laughs> That's some beef. Carrot is not messing around. These are protective parrot vibes. It's not my favorite song here, but the energy is absolutely unhinged, and uh, I, I'm kind of into it. The biggest banger on this thing, though, comes in the form of carbon dioxide, which I think may be the best distillation of the energy coming off of the title of the album, because I think Karen very much sings about the boldness that one must show in the face of love, holding their heart while also falling, because you have that desire and safety that one seeks in romance, but then also there's the chaos and volatility and unpredictability of love. We have a groovin, almost clubby instrumental on this one, some bright string hits as well, a very climactic ending. I wish more songs on this thing were as much of a thrill. Then we have the last leg, which I found to be maybe a little too chill in pockets. I do like the ambient pop stylings of the song North, which sounds like it was recorded in the midst of a desolate tundra or something like that, with a chilling atmosphere, droning synth layers, but it's still supremely enchanting and pretty much envelops me entirely by the end of the cut. But then from there, tapping fingers seems to turn the intensity down even further to the point where things get a little bland, and then the outro, Bottom of the Ocean, is needlessly lengthy and kind of uneventful, showcasing Karen getting lost in all of these oh, 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 oh vocal passages over some very eerie, repetitive, and rough synth passages that go on for about seven minutes or so, which, again, I think makes for a pretty anticlimactic finish. Overall, I'll say this, I think this record is better than Plunge. It's more focused, it's more consistent, I find the instrumentals and songs to be a bit more tasteful and measured, while still working in plenty of bold and memorable moments too. I think this LP is more in touch with the vibes and aesthetics and progressions that made the original Fever Ray record so great. But still, with that being said, I don't think this is Karen's strongest crop of songs to date, and the ending of the album is a lot weaker than the start. I'm feeling a strong six to a light seven on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head, it's another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Fever Ray, forever.